Hey, everybody. How's it going today? Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm super psyched to have my friend Dave Hill with me today. Comedian, uh, guitar player, uh, and so much more. Podcaster, all sorts of stuff. We'll talk about Dave in a minute. Just want to say uh, thanks to BB for being here. And everybody, of course, as always, open up the chat over here. If you have any questions for me or Dave, we just put a question mark in front of it, and we'll get to it as quickly as possible. Today is brought to you by my good friends over at Watchtower Guitars. I should probably put that little logo up in the corner there, which I forgot. But there we go. Eh, yeah, somewhere. All right, whatever. <laughs> um, and we're super psyched to be here. I have a, a masterclass coming up this weekend called Blues Moves Live. There's a link over below and on the side there or below. And uh, it is 50% off the live masterclass happening on Sunday at 1 p.m. called Blues Moves uh, for Rhythm Guitar. Kind of basically things that you can do when you're playing rhythm guitar to make things more interesting, take it to the next level, all that stuff. Um, and if you can't get, if you can't catch that live, you can catch it on the replay, which you can watch anytime you want once you enroll. And um, yeah, so you get that link below or over there on the side and BB has put that up. Thanks so much, BB. You got Angus Clark here, all sorts of stuff. So I've got my friend Dave Hill, comedian, um, musician, and fellow metalhead fan. Play a little clip of Dave, so we can get a chance to see what's going on there. Where did that go? Where did my video clip go? Oh no. Where is it? You're kidding. Hold on. I had this all planned out. Where'd the video clips go? Uh oh. I just played it for him. Who knows what's going on? Hold on. Uh oh. Hey, Dave, they disappeared. I don't know when that happened. All right. Well, we're going to bring Dave on. <laughs> Sorry. So oh, much hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had the video clips ready to go and they just disappeared. So if oh, you I'm want, sorry. you can check out Dave over at um, DaveHill.com, right? Dave Hill. Dave Hill on online.com or my, inst my, all my social media pretty much is at Mr. Dave Hill at MR Dave Hill, but yeah. there's all sorts of clips and whatnot. Let me see if I can upload one of these right now. See what happens. I'm going to try it. It's uploading. Hey, it might work. If it uploads, we'll we'll cut over to it. All right. All right. So uh, Dave and I first met at a gig where uh, it was Jason Lachlan. My friend Jason Lachlan was playing. He invited me to sit in, and Dave was there. And I've been a fan of Dave's for a long time from his Instagram posts, which I think are hysterical. So if you don't know, definitely check him out over on social media. Um, and then we, we just hit it off because I basically forced myself upon you. <laughs> Buying Thank you a beer, you're like, what? You know. No, I was I was thrilled. Yeah, and then we we I, both sat in and um, right approach. Thanks, and Alcohol. both realized we're both kind of metalheads. Totally, yeah. I was gonna say closet metalheads, but we're not closeted about any about about it one one bit. No, not at all. Um, knows. So the. What I thought was really cool, what I really enjoy about your comedy is it's great mix. Well, you probably answered these questions a million times, but you have a cool mix of comedy and music, which is a, a, a tradition, you know, well, but uh, were there influences for you? Like what was kind of the main wave that you kind of got into this? Uh, I mean, it's, it's taken me a while to sort of mix the, mix the, the music more and more because uh, you know, I started off playing in bands and then, and, but, you know, and then I sort of drifted into comedy sort of out of, uh, I was, I just liked talking on stage in between songs and, and then I was a journalist briefly and I would just, I would, didn't care about journalism at all, really. I just wanted to sneak jokes into the articles and get them past the editor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, um, yeah, so when I when I really the way it came about was I started doing shows. Uh, my friend Greg Barris had a show that had a house band, and my friend Tom Papa has a show with a house band, Come to Papa, and then Wesley Stace has a show at City Winery with a house band, and then whenever there'd be a house band, I would just bring my guitar and have them kind of vamp behind me, and I would play 
I would just do my stand-up set and then play solos in between my jokes because it was just more fun for me. And I also realized like that, you know, a lot of the musical comedy I saw, I mean, Tenacious D I've always loved and Flight of the Concords, but most of the other musical comedy that I saw, I just, I kind of wasn't into it. And, um, and then I sort of realized that, you know, and I was like, well, it's not funny to be good, really. It's funny, you know, but then I was like, wait, if, then I realized like, well, right hand tapping and stuff and all that is always really funny. And then I started doing that stuff mm -hmm. and it was kind of people who started really liking that. And I, of course, like doing that. So I was like, good, we, we all win. <laughs> and also the secret is that when you play guitar solos dur during your stand-up set you only need half as many jokes so a 10 minute set is a 20 minute set is a 40 minute set you know and, and so on so uh you know it, it's sort of fun for and and it's also just out of laziness kind of i leave the house one you know i still you know, playing a band and stuff. And, and I do plenty of comedy shows where I don't play guitar, but mm -hmm. it's nice to do both. Cause then you kind of just leave the house once and kind of scratch both itches at, you know, you're like, Oh, I yeah, got yeah. some jokes. I got to rip some solos. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's a more efficient way to, to leave the house. So, um, and then now really, I, you know, in the last, especially the last, eight months, 10 months, you know, from, you know, especially the Tenacious D tour where, you know, I was, when I did that in September, I, you know, I was doing a half hour set and probably like 25 minutes of it, there was music going in some way, whether, you know, a backing track or, you know, kind of vamps that um, John Spiker and Scott Seaver, uh, the ten Tenacious D's, uh, bass player and drummer respectively awesome dudes and awesome players they were kind enough to join me playing you know on during my sets and and then you know especially given that we're playing you know they were it was like ten thousand people you know so yeah. i was like oh this is way more fun i like performing for ten thousand people i think that's a better way to do it <laughs> good work you know, right it's better than a hundred. It's more fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I sure. can say without question, uh, it's more fun. And uh, how'd, you get, how'd you get up opening for Tenacious D? Um, oh, by the way, Dave's opening for Tenacious D in their upcoming tour as well. Yeah, in May. I'm so excited. Um, they're the best guys, and and honestly, the best band. I have to, no bullshit. Like, uh, they their live shows. I before the tour we did in September. I saw Metallica at MetLife Stadium like two weeks before. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, Metallica, Tenacious D puts on a way more rock and show. Awesome. I mean, they have more fire. They it's it's just a better show. So it's an amazing show. It's a hilarious show. Music's great. But no, I, I honestly just woke up one morning and you know started checking my email and there was uh an email asking if I wanted to open for Tenacious D from their agent. And I was like, whoa. Wow. Uh, that's cool. So I was just super psyched. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I knew those guys a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but hadn't seen them. You know, I'd, I'd met Jack a couple times and uh, I knew Kyle, but I hadn't seen them in a long time. So it was, it was such a nice surprise. And uh, they're the best guys and their whole, their band and their whole, their whole crew. Like, you know, there's like 25 people on their, their whole operation. And it's all amazing. You know, like every single one of them, every single person you're psyched to see every day. Usually 25 people working anywhere. There's going to be someone you don't like normally. <laughs> yeah. But with the, they, their whole thing is like uh, all excellent individuals. So. I'm super looking forward to it uh, in May when we go, go out again. Awesome. But but yeah, the, so that tour was like really uh, made me 
really like uh kind of feel like a shift in what I was doing because I was finally like oh I'm finally like being on a bill with them like felt better than I mean obviously the 10,000 people helps that helps but just in terms of what we're both doing it was the first time I was like this feels like super compatible normally I feel like like the oddball in every situation but I was like I don't feel like an oddball for the first no time. well those guys for sure yeah so uh and so it yeah it's, it was super inspiring and and kind of um you know and then i just went out with michael shannon uh who's best known as an actor but a great singer as well and he and my buddy jason Arducey from bob mold's band and super chunk and and split single his band they did the tour um doing the first rem album and so that was another you know thing where it was like a music show and uh and over for that and that was super fun so now i'm now i'm like oh like i want to go tour with bands <laughs> one I yeah guess, even though i just shit talked metallica arguably uh, <laughs> uh hopefully i'm it waiting for the call at the same time but i my, my comments about them is really only meant to inspire them because I, I mean i do love them and they put on a great show my point is sure. they need to step it up because it yeah, yeah. Like it. shows better yeah so but yeah um and now i'm now i'm just kind of excited to uh to kind of just push what i'm doing and uh, who know who knows where i'll land hopefully yeah, not I, uh and my clip it's here's a clip of you on stage and i'll we'll cut back in a minute check it out and my dad just moved out of the house i grew up in and into a one-bedroom apartment way out in the middle of the woods, way, way out in the middle of nowhere. And I just went home and visited him for a whole week, just the two of us in that little apartment. And by the end of that week, we were pretty much like one raccoon shy of a full-on Grey Garden scenario. And I know not everyone laughed at that, but if you saw Grey Gardens right now, you're thinking, well, that's probably the best joke I'll hear all year. But the good thing about that joke is you could watch Great Gardens in like 10, 20, even 30 years and you'll think back to today and you'll think, wow, Dave Hill did it again. He's the best there ever was. All right, just because I do cool stuff doesn't mean the band should do cool stuff. What the hell, Chris? You're going to get the talk after the show. My dad is. There we go. So we might cut the end there. Uh, now, who was that band? They're, they're, they're not too bad. <laughs> no. Uh, well, Chris Teeley, of course, uh, mm -hmm. the host of uh, of the show live from here, um, and uh, band leader and uh, mandolin shredder, mm -hmm. Julian Lodge. Uh, was in the band that day the band i did that show three times and the band kind of uh uh you know always changes but critter uh on guitar i believe he was on in the band that day why okay. why am i spacing on his last name i don't uh, i don't know what's wrong with me it's okay don't worry about it and then who else the drummer i believe was from uh I don't, I can't, no. I'm, I didn't I'm mean to put you in the spot. It was just everywhere with Chris Tealy. We talk about the pronunciation. Yeah, but there's there's, there's always fun. just all sharpshooters in that band. Yeah, yeah, totally. Which is, um, as you can see, I love, you know, it's part of the reason I love having the band is, you know, there's more, way more energy, you know, because mm -hmm. I had been using a looping pedal a lot. And then now I pretty much, when I tour, I do it kind of Chuck Berry style where I, I just get a different band for each show when, you know, with, with the exception of like, you know, on the, um, Tenacious D, I was lucky enough to have, to have Scott and John, uh, you know, to have them every night. And, uh, and, but usually it's like, I meet people, you know, people DM me on Instagram and be like, Oh, see, so you're coming to town. Do you need a drummer or whatever? And that's how the band comes together. So, um, usually works out pretty well there's sometimes it doesn't work that well but 
It always works fine, actually. But you, the better the musicians, the more fun it is, and the I think the funnier it is to be mean to them. The better, yeah. the better they are. Because you can, if someone's sure. clearly not that good, it, you can't really. It's not that funny to berate them. But uh, if someone's clearly amazing, I, nothing brings me greater joy than to insult them. <laughs> <laughs> in front of a lot well, of people it's fun yeah i mean i would love that you know like you, you, you clearly everybody knows you're joking around you're up there with some you know yeah monsters. yeah i don't think anyone no, nobody's taking it seriously i don't there think. was one time i did a show um the milk carton kids were doing the newport folk festival in this chapel and they were kind enough to have me perform with them this is i don't know a handful of years ago five years ago maybe and uh, Ben Montench was on the show, of course, from Tom Petty and Heartbreakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm a huge fan. And I was like, no, he's such a nice guy. And I met him. And then they were like, oh, Ben Mont, do you want to play? Because I had Milk Carton kids um, backing me for my set. And they're like, you know, and then they were like, ask Ben Mont to join as well. So I didn't have a chance to tell him I was going to yell at him. And, uh, and then so I had to yell at him in front of like a thousand people. And I was like thinking, I'm like, I can't believe I'm yelling at like one of my heroes without <laughs> even. But he he obviously got it. What was going on? Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, it's pretty funny. So let's talk a little bit of uh, uh, metal because that's where sure. So, yeah, this is where we kind of you've done some crazy stuff that I think is hysterical and awesome. So Thanks. this is my friend Angus Clark, who's on the chat here. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, and we were gonna, we're gonna we all got to get together for that beer. That as I promised. I know. I want this. This has to happen. Uh, yeah. We we need a, uh, a summit. We need J Angus, Jason, and me, and you would be great. Jason yeah, would be a little bit out on the metal references, but both you have an old boy, and an Angus has an old boy SG. Yeah, I have mine right here, actually. Oh, let's see. Coincidentally, I don't know if Angus has the the Shaler bridge i have just a whatever that bridge is called tuna can or something. chime in on that one i don't know but we yeah, did a whole thing on that. is a total beast and i just got it set up and it's kind of like uh it went from number 10 to number one or tied mad, tied for number mad. one i should say Dude, there's there's a few tied for number one oh. yeah matt at 30th um but yeah, it's a total beast. Um, so, though I don't Angus, know, there's there's my, you know many there's my Illuminati is amazing as well. They're a, a, a luxury problem. Too many sweet guitars. Uh, so Angus, the question was, what do you think your top five metal moments were? You got some good ones to talk about. Oh, well, that's a good question. Well, most recently, I'd have to say, riding my BMX bike. My mongoose on uh, Madison Square Garden with Pantera was pretty metal, I'd have to say. Um, and the thing about, you know, I'm friends with, with Phil Anselmo and his, and his wife, Kate. I've been friends with them for a long time. And I can't even, I started making videos on my bike uh, and using, and I'd be like, what's the perfect, music and every i've genuinely tried to use other bands i think i used danzig once and then i tried i every time i just keep going well pantera sounds better with a bike video every every time i tried slayer and i was like oh it doesn't work for some reason and uh and so i can't remember i remember i was thinking i was going to ask kate uh, Richardson, Phil's wife, um, you know, if I could ride the bike on stage. And I think she, I don't remember if I ever asked her because I think she beat me to it. And she texts me, she's like, I'm, I want to get you to ride your bike on stage. And then, uh, but they, none of the guys seem to think I'm serious when I mention it. And right. so they were, you know, this is what was like two weeks ago or something. And, um, and they got to town like a day early and like so i was i was having dinner with phil and kate and kate's like tell phil like what you want to think 
and he's like, what is it? You know, so I was like, I'm like, I just want to come out during walk and do try to do wheelies on the. Da, 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 so he's like, oh, yeah, that's an excellent idea. And they usually have friends come up and sing backups on that song anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so, yeah, it was amazing. But the best part. So I quickly realized that they didn't bother to tell uh, Rex, Zach, or Charlie that I was going to mm -hmm. do it. So as soon as I came on stage, just to look uh, in Rex Brown, the bass player, of course, uh, the look on his face where he was like, what the, what's happening? <laughs> um, well, I'm looking down to give people an idea on Instagram. Oh, yeah, I think that's my most recent video. Yeah. Pantera's playing and you're riding your bike around destroying stuff. Yeah, they're just like, uh, you know, my high energy workout videos, basically. <laughs> and they're, they're awesome. So just to give people, so you end up doing that on stage, which is, which is freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah, so that would be, I mean, that's pretty metal. But today, I'm in the new uh, The Obsessed had a new video come out today. I'm in their their video, their music cool. video. Um, if you consider them metal, I mean, they're I guess more in the stoner doom, but I guess that's you know a sub a sub genre. Sub genre metal, yeah. So, um, I think that's pretty metal. I mean, those are those are, these are examples of literal metal things, mm -hmm. but I would say other metal things. Uh, Now I'm trying to think of things that are just metal without being in, involved with metal bands. Um, I drove a monster truck once. That's pretty metal. That's pretty metal. Just through a field, but it always comes to mind as being a pretty metal thing. I drove Gravedigger, the monster oh, truck. The they, actual they Gravedigger. The, <laughs> well, they had, this was years ago, they had um, like kind of a, on a one that was easier to drive for like a okay. uh, regular person who didn't mm -hmm. wasn't schooled in the monster truck arts um and so i i drove that and that sticks out as being pretty metal mm -hmm. um pretty metal. what else you met dio oh yeah the dio thing i mean that was literally metal mm -hmm. dio when I first started comedy, I think I've been doing comedy for like a year and I was going out to LA to do my first ever, I used to do this kind of talk show called the Dave Hill explosion. And I would get celebrity guests, uh, to, to be on it. So I was going to LA and I was like, I want to get Dio. Like that would be the dream guest for LA. Mm -hmm. And I knew, uh, to, I had two paths to Dio, and somehow, I think my friend Dan DeVita gave me Wendy Dio's uh, email address, and I emailed her, and then, uh, yeah, she called, and she's like, yeah, Ronnie's into it. So, and it's just at the UCB Theater on Franklin in L.A., and uh, I was so nervous, and, like, Dio walks in, and, like, you would think... You know, you think like, oh, a guy like that, maybe like he's not full on Dio all the time. And uh, he walks in and is like, well, that's Ronnie James. Like he's wearing like black, cool clothes. Yep. He looks like Dio. And I even asked him, I'm like, are you Dio like all the time? Or do you just like throw on some sweatpants and go to Ralph's? He's like, nope, Dio all the time. I'm like, as that's oh. which is the answer you want. Yeah. Totally. And um so I have it in the other room, actually. But so after the show, he's and he was the nicest guy. And he he's he signed my I had an acoustic guitar and he signed it. Um, Dave Hill rocks magic. And he was so he's like, you don't want me to sign the front of this guitar. I don't want to ruin it. I'm like, your deal. Of course, I, you can't sign the back of the guitar. Right. Even though it was kind of absurd to have him sign an, uh, an acoustic guitar in the first place. But, and then sometime after that, uh, I did the show in New York and Ira Glass was the guest. And he was like, Who signed that guitar? 
Ira Glass from This American Life. Um, mm-hmm. For the if anyone doesn't know, um, and I was like Dio, and he's like, "Who?" This is a horrifying answer. He he says, "Who's Dio?" Horrifying question. And and which is when I realized, like, people there's two kinds of people in this world. You people who know full on Dio. There's like there's no gray area. Like either you're fully vo- well versed in Dio or you've never mm-hmm. heard of Dio. There's no there's no gray area in my experience. So he didn't know, and I was explaining to him who Dio was and uh and then I was like wait you have to sign this guitar too because that's like the yin and yang of my whole existence basically as Ira Glass and Dio like I'm kind right. of basically vacillating between those two uh mm-hmm. polar opposites <laughs> and okay. uh so I do have the what I believe to be the world's only acoustic guitar signed by Ronnie James Dio and Ira Glass. I, I doubt there's just another. Well, hold on. Um, <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be um, cool. I pulled it out. <laughs> um, and so, so anyway, so Dio, uh, after the show, we're like backstage in the little green room, and, and he's like, uh, He's like, hey, uh, don't tell him. This is, I thought this is so sweet and just cool what he did. He's like, hey, um, don't tell anybody. Uh, like, uh, but I'm going flying to England in a few days and I'm gonna, I'm getting together with Tony Iommi and we're gonna write some songs. And, uh, and like, but he, I'm, I'm sure there were many people that knew this already, but he told it to me as if I, were the third person like it was like tony ronnie and now dave knows like i thought it was so nice that he did that made me feel like he he was telling me this thing that nobody knew and of course that became you know they did uh the new tracks and then they did you know what became heaven and hell band Mm -hmm. and um and then he's like hey do you like indian food i was like yeah it's my favorite. And he's like, well, I love Indian food too. Like, do you want to get Indian food next time you come to LA? And he's like, I know all the best places. I'm like, yeah, I want to get Indian food with Dio. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. And then I kept trying and he would, but he was like fully doing heaven and hell by the time, um, every time I came back. And then sadly he died not long after. So we, we never had, we had never had Indian food, but just to have Dio ask me if I wanted to get Indian food sometime, I'm I'm actually knocking that to the top of the metal list of most metal that's, things. I've yeah, that that's pretty metal. If you're just having Dio give you, yeah, let's get Indian food. <laughs> um, cool. trying to think of uh, other metal things I've done. I mean, I'm just constantly doing metal thing. I did I did open for Autopsy, my friend Chris Reifert's band, Autopsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, original drummer for Death founding member and now he has autopsy of course and um so they were doing a show at reggie's in chicago and uh he asked me if i wanted to to us you know open the show so i was like yeah and i'd, I'd already opened for down a couple times um phil and Selma's other band with pepper keenan and jimmy bauer and kirk winstein and pat bruders and um so and and down those guys are all really funny and know that the best thing you can do is put a comedian on right as direct support um well, which i really that, res- how's that I go respect- how's that- i mean when kind of my sweet spot is um is i the, the opening for down is really my one of amazing situation um, because half the crowd is fully on board and the other half is completely confused and doesn't know what's happening. And that's sort of my career in a nutshell. Um, so it's really fun. And I, but I, I always thought it was, uh, pretty cool that they had the sense of humor to be like, let's put a comedian on to right before. Cause I, like one of the times I was well, the, uh, admittedly the only other act. I opened for them their sort of homecoming New Orleans show, but then they had me open for them in Atlanta and they put two metal bands on, then me, which I thought was 
a genius move. Sure. And um, so, so uh, when Autopsy was playing Reggie's in Chicago a year or two ago, like Chris asked me to do it, I was like, yeah, totally. And uh, and and so the listing comes out, and they had me going first, and then like three death metal bands, then Autopsy. And I, te I texted Chris and I was like, Chris, it's not funny if I go on first. You have to put me direct support. That's the mm -hmm. only way. That's the only way to do this. And he's like, completely agree. So going on at like 11 o'clock uh, <laughs> was pretty right before after three death metal bands. That was felt pretty metal. Yeah, um, that's pretty metal. So yeah, that might be. I'm sure I'll think of other. Uh, the I thing is. I know you had some great great stories about this kind of I'm, stuff, which I love. I'm constantly doing metal things. So, yeah. But, yeah, those come to mind. Uh, so one of my favorite things you do on Instagram, and it's probably TikTok as well, is you, you do these duets, and very often you do them with John Mayer, which is one of my favorites. So let's just check out one of these so you guys can get an idea what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh man, I just love that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, hope you That's on my Godfrey guitars, Voltez, which is a sweet uh, builder, less Godfrey. Nice. Um, so, you got any questions for Dave over in the chat? Guitar related, any questions for me? Anything you want to talk about? Um, I've got a very metal heart, but uh, sorry. <laughs> got to my good, my very metal job now. We'll see you later, man. Yeah. Uh, here's Angus. The Dio story is amazing, for sure. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Um, Jason Carter wants to know, has Dave ever met Saucy Janet, inventor of the pickles? <laughs> People are no, going to be... Okay, I, so, I, I hope to. <laughs> if you watch Dave's Instagram, which Jason Carter is a fan of, you'll, you'll get the joke. So go over to Dave's Instagram, thank which you. I think is great. Um, Oh yeah. Oh, there. Dave, a few. Wait, what? Is Dave a fan of British comedy? His humor fits right in over here. I'm a huge fan of British comedy. I mean, there's plenty of uh, American and Canadian comedy that I love. But mm -hmm. yeah, I love British comedy. Um, yeah, totally. There's so much stuff that I love, and so much great stuff. I tend to think that uh i mean I, lo I love performing comedy in america but like a, a really great audience in 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 england in the uk is is the best audience i think because i think that they comedy is more interesting there and the audiences are more a bit more savvy i think because they've just been a society longer like they've just been around longer so they're just weirder, I think. I mean, English comedy is some of my favorite, and it's obviously clearly Monty Python being the, the pinnacle in, in my yeah. mind. And it, the, the absurdist angle of it, and in the linguistic angle, when you get into things like the argument clinic, you know, it's, it's brilliant. So I think what I love about British comedy is it can be ridiculous slapstick if you're talking Monty Python, like the fish dance, all the way to um, – the Eurovision Song Contest questions, you know, when they're interviewing Shea Guevara, <laughs> you know, like, you know, these mm -hmm. amazing, you know, so for me, I, I do understand what you're saying. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, there's plenty of so many great shows, um, you know, and even more recently, like Mighty Boosh and all that. Mm -hmm. Toast of London. Oh, uh, yeah. I love Matt Berry. Garth Marenghi. 
dark uh, place. Yeah. yeah. And just endless great stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, if you guys know for uh, Matt Berry, who I think is really most well now known now for what we do in the Shadows TV show. Yeah. But uh, there's some great shows. There's a Toast of London, which is one of my favorites ever, and Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which is amazing. Yeah. Snuffbox and Matt, is pretty out there. Snuffbox is great too. Yeah. And Rich Fulcher yeah. is a buddy of mine. Um, oh, cool. So, uh, yeah. And he's, he's hilarious. Though so he's American. So, oh, yeah. And Matt there Berry's Wild Love, those, those clips from the BBC. Mm -hmm. Those are And awesome. Matt's a great musician as well. Yeah. His song is the theme to uh, Toast of London. Right. Um, Angus, I do not have the Shaller Bridge. Oh, what does he have? Does he have the... What is the bridge I have? Is that too pneumatic? And I do, I I do have, have the, the JD. You got to have the JD pickups. So let's let's clear up what we're talking about here. So you have an old boy guitar, and Angus does as well. They're made for Tony Iommi. Uh he, he's the one who made Tony's guitars and you have the crosses on yours, right? Yeah, I went uh, uh, full uh, with the except because they ran out of the Shaler bridges or Shaler stopped making them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I couldn't get that bridge. Um, though my buddy Mike Kiki has, uh, he bought one that has the bridge. So I, I did play borrow it from him. It's pretty sweet. But yeah, it's an, it's a great guitar. Uh, uh, I love it. And then this story, I probably shouldn't tell the story, but I'll do it. Do I it. was at uh, I was at, at Gibson. I mean, a huge. Let me be clear, massive fan of Gibson guitars, obviously. But um, so I was there, and I was talking with a couple of the guys, and I was like. Talking, I'm like, oh, I got this, you know, because I have like five Gibsons, but I was like, yeah, I got. Um, you know, I have an SG, you know, this, this SG. And then I was like, I have, I bought the Tony Iommi SG that they did recently. Not the $20,000 one, the, the USA one. That's not, not $20,000. And, um, and then I was like, oh, and I have a JD old boy also. And, oh, it was a real record scratch moment. Uh, <laughs> They were like they they just kind of looked away from me and I was like, oh, abort, abort. <laughs> I thought they wouldn't mind me mentioning it because I'm like, I was like, you know, Tony Iommi plays them both. So I thought if Tony Iommi can do it, certainly I can do it. But uh I don't think I got the dispensation that Tony Iommi gets. Probably not. So it's just a That's lesson fun. not to not to bring up Gibson clones when you're at Gibson. <laughs> just a word to the yeah, just throwing it it's out just there. Just not a good move. And you were there with Billy Gibbons, right? Didn't they tell me like that at that point in time? Wasn't I Gibbons well, there? I didn't go there with Billy Gibbons. So oh, I went there. Alex Skolnick. I I was there with a really uh legendary guitar player also, but still I went Alex Skolnick and I went and uh Cesar, you know, who runs Gibson awesome dude was kind enough to uh you know really gave us like a make a wish foundation couple days where we you know i played big ed the legendary explorer mm -hmm. like a like first year explorer and and um alex played i mean they took us in the vault there with all the you know holy grail versions of each guitar and there's a guitar that's like the cousin or sister or whatever of Greeny that's like mm -hmm. two million dollars or whatever. And and Alex was playing that. And then I played the uh, much cheaper one point three million dollar Big Ed or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Terrified to what even care, hold the thing. Sure. Talk about two things that are stressful to be playing guitar with Alex Skolnick trading solos but also doing it on a guitar that uh, is worth a, over a million dollars sure. is uh, a very fun, amazing situation, but also extremely stressful situation. <laughs> I should, but I should ask awesome. Alex. I've known Alex for Pardon? a long time. I should ask him to come. I should, I've known Alex for a long time too. I should ask him to, to come on one day. Yeah, you have to, he's the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, 
great guy and and obviously amazing player. Um, that was more like from Testament and his own jazz fusion band, which is great. yeah, yeah, he's, he's um, a total beast, God. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we were uh, so, so we were there for a couple of days, and Cesar was like, oh, uh, you know, Billy Gibbons is coming by tomorrow. You should swing by. And uh, so yeah, we went there. Billy walks in. And he's got pearly gates with him. And uh as one does. And, yeah, as one does. And uh <laughs> so I got to hold I was too afraid to play pearly gates, but I did hold pearly gates. Alex uh had the confidence to actually play pearly gates a little bit. Wow. That's fun. Um but I got a picture with with pearly gates and bill was well, the first they were like do you want to get your picture with pearly gates and i was like yeah but then billy gibbons standing like 10 feet away so i was like I, I think i should really just uh really do this so i i had someone mustered the confidence to say hey billy would you come here <laughs> but he was yeah. so he is the nicest guy i was blown away by how nice and engaged uh he was uh talking to a street urchin like myself it's one of those funny things like uh, I've, everybody I know has somehow met Billy or knows Billy. And they're like, yeah, you know, Billy. Right. And I'm like, no, I don't know Billy. I'm like, like I, like I would, you know, or like, Oh man, Billy just left the story. I can't believe you weren't here. And I'm like, no, nope, miss, miss, miss Billy again. So it's, it's been a very kind of funny thing that like, I'll show uh -huh. up at a store after he's left. I'm like, Oh yeah, you guys would get along great. And I'm like, He's like one of my favorite guitar players of all time. Just it would be so awesome, you know. Oh to, yeah, and and off memories, he's a great guy, you know. So you gotta... Yeah, he was. I was really like, there was this point where that you know, this was probably like eight of us standing around and we're talking about stuff, and um, and I realized he was like looking, at, like talking to me about these amps, like his amps, and he's like slash borrowed my amp my matchless ma no magnetone mm -hmm. and um and then i i was like oh shit he's looking me in the eye i might burst into flames <laughs> but i didn't i survived you survived <laughs> yeah but yeah we uh, had an amazing such a uh, so nice uh all the gibson folks we had such an amazing couple days down there i've been at the garage despite me putting my foot yeah it was amazing i the, i put my foot in my mouth but other You're than right. that it was good yeah. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, like, you know, let's be honest. It's like there's reasons why Tony had those other guitars built because at a certain point in time, Gibson's quality control was not, you know, I think they're making really good guitars again. But, you know, what I'm saying like they, the management, everything changed, you know. So, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, I think he know. started playing those in sort of the like what the Norlin era or something. <laughs> uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve. Uh, more, can you please ask when Dave or yourself might be coming uh, to New Orleans again? I have no, I, I know I might be coming to play with my friend Tracy Farmer, who's online right now, or was. So I'll be, I'll let you know when I'm coming down. I'm going to play sit, sit with him's band for a weekend in the spring. Oh, nice. How about you? Um, you be I want to. I'm sort of like working on, uh, yeah, getting to cities I haven't been. I've only done comedy once or twice in new orleans and i and I, I love new orleans have a lot of friends there and would love to go back there so tell steve well steve can hear me now i guess he can uh to tell his local venue to have to book me because i would love to come and do a show awesome yeah you know that's one of the things that like matt schofield always says like you know tell the club that would have me to book me <laughs> If they don't know yeah. that you want me, you should tell them that you want me. It's to come weird. Back. I've I've gotten a lot of shows that way just by telling people that I ask them like tell them whatever place you like to book me, and then I'll end up coming there. That's funny. Yeah, how that's stuff that's works. really how it works. Yeah. Um, um, got this right here. Uh, just got here. Uber gas. Somebody has finally caught a clue to his badassery. His his stomp with Rockoff and Plimpton are high watermarked. Oh wow! Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's that was something I did. Oh wow, long time ago. Probably like oh, 
15, 16 years ago at least. Uh, did, yeah, I did this video with my buddy David Rakoff, who's sadly not around anymore, and 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 my buddy Martha Plimpton. It's, it's on YouTube. Oh, cool. Martha mm -hmm. Plimpton, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, looking over some questions. Uh, here we go. Oh, BV. <laughs> Billy, my friend told me he avoids you <laughs> on purpose, Jeff. Oh, Jeff's oh, coming. Man. I'm out of here. I'm out. That's cold. <laughs> I want him. So Steve so Moore is saying, consider it done. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Man. Good. Yeah, I really want to. I love New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's I forgot like, I'm supposed uh, to do an ad for my friend's store who helps helps here. What's the store? Watchtower Guitars. All right, Watchtower Guitars, I'm very happy to live live streams. Brought to you by my good friends at Watchtower Guitars in Morristown, New Jersey. They have a fine selection of new and used instruments from Gibson, Fender, PRS, Tuttle, Danicaster, Nacho, Novo, Music Man, and more. And to fit any budget, they carry a full line of PRS SC models up to way to private stocks, as well as the best amps from Two Rock, PRS, Jamino, Rev, Amplified Nation, Tyler, Magnetone, Bad Cat, Milkman, and more. Um, Great bunch of guys, Steve Wassel and John. John, who plays in the Afghan wigs and the Gigolo ants. Yeah. Oh no way. So, yeah, you want to go? We'll go. We'll go visit. Which one guy is? That? Which guy? John is he the bass player. Guitar player. One of the guitar players. Oh, the guitar. He lives in Morristown. Yeah. Wild. I'm a big Afghan wigs fan. All right. Well, we'll go out. Yeah, I would want. love it. And um, yeah. you know what Hold I guess. On. Wait, hold on. Let me finish the. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I completely. Inter I'm like a child. I just heard a no, detail no. that caught my attention. I interrupted you. No, this is fun. Okay. Um, you can give them a. They have a good website, watchtowergitars.com. It's great. But if you want to call them directly, definitely do that at 973-900-4755. 973-900-4755. And if you use the, if you go online and buy something, or let them know JM Live, and that's good for ten percent off any. Used or new PRS guitars, amps, Music Man guitars, LSL guitars, Bad Cat amps, Total guitars that are in stock. And finally, they are uh, have uh, Chris Fleming used to work for the Fender Master Built uh, is now building guitars with LSL specifically with Watchtower guitars. If you want to get one of those and check that out and talk to them about that, also give a call over there at 973-900-4755. That's the best way to get them because their website. Although good doesn't have everything on it all the time. If you want to talk about those guitars, call them directly. Watch Tower Guitars. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's like an old TV show, right? I love it. You know, TV show. Yeah, like the Joe Franklin show, Matzos by Stripes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Joe Franklin. But, I knew Joe Franklin. I was friends with Joe Franklin. Wow. Joe Franklin not was a name, legendary TV John. show that was based yeah. in New York on Channel yeah. W or Channel Nine. Yeah. In Sea Caucus, mm -hmm. but oh, going back to the John Mayer video. Uh, first of all, no word from the mayor camp on any any of these videos I've made with him. Really, nothing. And we, and we have many. Like... What's that? Does he even like them? I don't know. We have many mutual friends, but somehow, no. Uh, I would think Hasn't he happened. would enjoy them. You would. I mean, I would hope that he would know. You know, I'm not making fun of him. I'm just being an idiot, which is, you know, my brand. Um, but then I went to uh, I was at Sam Ash, the popular music store, and they had three of the John Mayer PRSs. And yes, so was I was. Yeah, so I picked one up. I think they were the not the USA models and I played one. It was amazing. So I was like, all right, I'll I'm going to play these other two now. All three of them completely killer, which is yeah. not surprising in the least. Right. But uh, was of note to me because I thought that I should have one. Um, and then then maybe someone would hear this and be like uh tell them to send me one but or i could just buy one like a person might but i'm a real big fan of not doing that 
I'm a real fan um, of people giving me shit for free. I'm a real fan. I'm a big fan of not paying for things. Um, <laughs> I, I've got my cat down here. This is what's going on. Sorry, my cat is right here. Oh, oh. I don't camera. know. My dog, my dog up, Lucy. If I lift it up, he grabs. So it's not, you know. Oh, sweet kitty. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're amazing. This totally badass guitars. The the John Mayer. Uh, I say it all the time. I think the PRS stuff, which you can get a watch tower guitars. Um, they're great. And I've been to PRS a bunch. And I am an endorser of PRS. I do work with them. But the only reason why I, I play their stuff is because it's freaking amazing. I think nothing... I don't think there's anything off the rack that compares to them. Everyone I've played, you're like, yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, they're, you know, I mean, I admittedly had not touched a PRS in about 30 years. Sure. And then I played one uh, and I was like, whoa, this is awesome. I want this guitar now. Yeah. But then I it's thought that maybe I should just mention it and put it into the universe and maybe uh one would just show up instead but maybe i'll just buy one now i'll just i'll probably just end up buying one yeah i think that's 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 the easiest why not why not it is the easiest way but it's the least fun way let me be clear lsl great guitars surf breeze says here in the chat i i lsl guitars are really cool i love them they are um any chance uh uh, Jeff, David, Jeff, any chance you'll be coming to the UK? You first. I'm glad you asked, Paul Taylor, because mm-hmm. I am coming to the UK. Uh, I will be there with Tenacious D in May, mm-hmm. doing Birmingham, Birmingham, Glasgow, uh, Nottingham, Brighton, Leeds, and I think, did I say Nottingham? Sheffield, maybe? maybe? Yeah, I can't remember. Six cities in the UK. And then I'm headlining four nights, May 15th through 18th, that doing the Soho Theater headlining shows in May. So um, the answer is yes. Awesome. Um, I'm working on some stuff. I've got a tour in September. I've spoken to um, Dan from that pedal show. Uh, we're trying to figure something out and if i go to england i'm gonna try to set up a gig or two if i possibly can maybe uh with matt Schofield's guys if i can work all this out you know these things are always difficult but while i'm there um or maybe in the summer i know it's not a great time but i might be in italy for a week in the summer that's still a to be determined but there is three and a half weeks in the czech republic and some dates in austria so i might try to tag something on back to that or the beginning of that so oh, that's you awesome. guys will know a long time in advance um, when I'm coming over to in- England. Can I ask like you a, a dog, a dog sure. based question, Jeff? Yeah. Do you find it hard to go away for that long and, and, and miss, don't you miss your sweet doggies? And cats, oh, yeah. I'm, and wife and wife. Let's be clear. And son. Yeah. Wife and son. Um, oh, you have a son? I do. Yeah. Oh, so you miss the son too. Okay. Um, yeah. which as well, you should, I do. Um, well, it's better I, now you know, there's FaceTime. It makes it much easier, you know, when you're, well, that's away. the thing you can, but, but the dogs and cats don't No, I feel like they don't care about that stuff. Cause like my girlfriend, I can talk to her and be like, you're good. Okay. I'll, so I'll see you talk soon. <laughs> but like the dog thinks I'm dead as soon as I leave. Oh yeah. Yeah, I guess he's, yeah. I guess Dave's dead. I don't know. So I don't. I never like to be away that long. It's that's the longest I'll be away in a long time. And my friend Walter, who booked the tour, who is part of the intro music, um, you know, he's like, "Oh, let's do a longer tour next time," because the first tour went really well. And like, "What's well, how long can you stay out?" I'm like, "I don't know. It's never going to happen." You know, two years when he started booking, I'm like, "I don't know." And he's like, "Oh, let's go." And then suddenly it's pushing a month. I'm like, "I haven't been away from." home for a month you know in yeah years and years so it should be interesting i don't think my wife will care that much <laughs> no she'll be like see you later stay see an extra time. month yeah exactly um but you know my kid i don't know i don't know teenager who knows you know they're always like sure oh, he's but a the teenager. Dogs, man. yeah the dogs though that's a big he's 18 yeah so the dogs though yeah the and kid my is old, 18 yeah, not the yeah. dog 
Well, I got a okay. dog who's like 14. So I'm always worried about like, you know, God forbid anything happened to Stanley while I was away. I would, sure. uh, that would be a drag and a half. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do miss the dogs. Cause yeah, that's a whole other, other sort of thing. You can't talk to him. And like I said, and I love when I come back from even being gone for a week or two and I come back and he's like, fuck you. <laughs> just like <laughs> Stanley acts mad at me for a day or so. Like he knows it's me, he smells me and he, and he just kind of walks away. And then like a day later, he's like, Hey, what's up? I'm back. You know, you, but that first day you can tell he's like, I'm kind of pissed at you. Yeah. He's pissed. Yeah. And with good reason. Sure. <laughs> Cats don't care. Cats. No, cats hate. don't care. Yeah. If I died, my cat would eat my face. You know what I mean? They don't care. You know, <laughs> like I think it's, <laughs> it's part of their charm. It is part of the charm. Um, I'm trying to think what we got here. So any other questions? Oh, I want to talk about your book, man. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, let's pump your book. Oh, I'm glad. Yes. Yeah. It is called The Awesome Game, One Man's Incredible Globe-Crushing Hockey Odyssey. I'm not a hockey fan at all, but I read some of your book because I got it at your book signing, and I really enjoyed it. It's, you don't have to be okay. a fan. It's just It's fun, man. It's just great. Thank you. That's my plan. I wrote it for people. If you're a hockey fan, hopefully you love it. But I wrote it just for enjoyment and you could read it and not care about hockey and hopefully enjoy it. That's that's what I Absolutely. attempted to do. I haven't finished yet. I apologize, but I'm enjoying it. Oh, that's OK. It's a timeless classic. So whenever you get around to it, you know. <laughs> It'll resonate and that's with available you on Amazon, the by the way, guys. If you want to help out Dave, that his book's available on the link down below on Amazon. Yeah, wherever you get incredible literature, it's available. Now, when I saw you your book signing, um, you were talking about this is funny, you were like you were throwing it out there that you wanted to play guitar at the national anthem at a hockey game. Yeah. And that indeed fact in fact happened after that, because you put it out to the universe, as you said then. And yeah, uh, what this is, I mean, yeah, well, that's I really learned a lesson from that because I, I said it at the book thing. And I don't know if I had posted, but then at some point around that time, I had posted on Instagram saying, you know, just a text photo saying, I want to play the national anthem on my original thing was I want to play the national anthem on guitar while skating at an NHL game. Mm -hmm. and uh so many people reached out to me immediately and were like i know a guy who works you know who mm -hmm. works in the parking lot of uh you know of the minnesota wilds arena or whatever you know like everything some people would like write and be like hey are you available to do the october 29th columbus blue jackets home game i'm like absolutely Mm -hmm. uh because i said i would do it anywhere in north america and so i was like do you work for the blue jackets they're like no no i just figured i would write them and ask them for you and i was like thank you i i admire that but mm -hmm. um yeah so raj Shuresh, a, a hilarious comedian and buddy of mine he knew someone at the cleveland monsters i'm from cleveland i was home for thanksgiving and they're like yeah we need someone they needed someone like the day after thanksgiving and like I ran upstairs and I was, you know, just made a quick uh, demo of, or, you know, video of me doing the anthem. And they're like, all right. So I did it there. It was super fun. And really, my only thing was I was like, I just want to go to a game and kind of participate since I, you know, the ship has sailed on me uh, playing for pro hockey and on any level. <laughs> And uh, so I was like, I think this thing would be a cool way to like get a little closer to the sport, you know, at a at a game and have fun. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I did it, and it was super fun. And I I can't write doing the anthem at a game is really fun because you then you watch the game and you walk around, you have some beers or whatever, and like people are just really nice to you the whole night. Like they're like, hey, great job, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's very uh makes for a fun night and so some time passed and then like a buddy of mine's ex-girlfriend was dating is dating a guy who plays hockey with one of the guys from violent gentlemen which is a clothing 
uh, hockey lifestyle brand. That's really awesome. And I highly recommend. And, uh, and that dude knew this dude, Sean there knew someone at Anaheim ducks and I was going to be in LA. I'm sorry. I'm giving you the real time explanation of how it happened. But, uh, so, uh, uh, I, yeah, ended up doing it. And again, was just like, I just want to go to the game play the anthem get my friends in maybe get some swag have some free food and drink all i'm mm-hmm. looking for and the next day after i did the ducks uh maple leafs game people started sending me all this coverage of william nylander from the maple leafs was like laughing the whole time when i was playing <laughs> and and so that made it all over the the uh all over the hockey websites and stuff and then sportsnet canada's sort of espn posted and people were just like ripping on me and then trevor zegras plays for the ducks they mic'd him for the game and he's had a face off from one of the maple leafs guys it's like that was the craziest anthem i ever heard and he's like yeah crazy not the best and then <laughs> uh, good luck buddy and then the puck drops and they skate off it's amazing i mean i absolutely no, I loved it and then yeah. this show, Breakfast Television in Canada, which is like their Today Show, did a, it's on YouTube, a four and a half minute segment, just smack talking me and my <laughs> anthem. And the irony uh, was that I've been, a, they were like, we don't know who this guy is. He's an unknown, uh, you know, which hurt as a Z-list celebrity. It was a bit of a blow. Ouch. And, and uh, but then the irony is I've been a guest. I've been on that show twice. Mm -hmm. um so i was like why are they saying they don't know i literally no one there is like wait that's dave he was just here i was on the show in october fast forward to january talking smack about me anyway it was uh great but i think i may be banned from the nhl (laughs) well you achieved the goal i mean that's all that matters right yeah mission accomplished yeah so Uh, yeah doesn't matter right yeah. I'm oh, Jason Lachlan. There you go. Greetings from the middle oh. of the Caribbean Sea. He's on a comedy cruise. What one is playing. he on? 20 what, on, what Jason. One? Now I'm mad that I wasn't invited. That was on Billy Gibbons told him not to invite you. Oh, it's cold. Basically, anything that happens that I wasn't invited, I get oh, mad. Yeah. Whatever it, it doesn't wasn't... matter what it was. Right. If it's something, anything is happening, and I wasn't asked to be a part of it, I, I'm offended. I take on. Oh, yeah. yeah. How come I? I don't want to do that gig. How come I didn't get the call? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How can I gonna call that guy? Why didn't they call me? Would you do it? No. Oh, it's the Joko cruise. The joke. Oh, yeah. I'm actually genuinely offended. They've never asked me to do that. The Uh-oh. Jonathan Colton Cruz. I don't know why he's never asked me. I know John. I've known Jonathan for years. Never asked me to do it. Well, we got Jason. will put in the word then. He's he's oh, already was... gotten the word. Yeah, he's well, already that, he's we... gotten the word. It's like why isn't Matt Schofield on the, the Joe Bonamassa cruise? Uh, life is just a series of indignities, isn't it? It is. Um, I think this I'm going to throw a gauntlet down all right do it Jason you can walk up to Jonathan Colton I'm trying so hard not to use profanity right now (laughs) and tell Jonathan who I'm friendly with Mm -hmm. tell him I know he's afraid to have me on the cruise he's afraid so there gauntlet thrown yeah down. it's music and comedy but is yeah. is there really music and comedy if i'm not there i don't think so i don't think so either no no i'm kidding but i'm also not even slightly <laughs> kidding um no i'm just i'm just you know sour grapes sour grapes i understand probably a horror what a horrible cruise all right we got um, uh I, i'm in jail I have nothing but time okay well hopefully you're if you uh, all right. <laughs> oh, here's Jason again. He's got, okay. Music and comedy, Sarah Hall, Amy Mann, and Jim Boja. 
Well, I only know who Amy is, so there, there you go. There you go. Jim Bo's no, I'm sure guy. they're I'm sure they're all amazing. I'm I'm kidding. I'm just sad that he's never asked me. He's only been doing it for 40 years. It'll be fine. But whatever. Things will no, change. It's okay. it's okay. I'm too busy anyway. Uh, if you <laughs> of course. Um, here we go. Jason, I love it. Jason's chiming really. Your absence is all anyone is talking about. All everyone is talking about. I mean, it, I can't imagine. People are just walking around. Hey, are you having a good time? Yeah, it's okay. It's not as good as it could be. Yeah. If Dave were Why here. Dave's not here. Yeah, yeah. The truth is, I am too busy to be on that cruise. So, so too of, busy doing my, my, my live uh, feed on my guitar nerd It's channel. more important. This was a bigger get for me. I would. <laughs> I appreciate you doing it, I'm and I appreciate you really being here for the change. I thought it'd be kind of fun to bring in someone else as a talk, opposed to talking about uh, super guitar nerd stuff, for sure. Yeah. Well, we can talk modes, you know, if you want. I, I'm okay with that. But you did <laughs> want to talk. One question you're going to ask me was, um, you have been using. Uh, he goes, oh, here's Jason. Here we go. And they're talking about you, that, and the Salisbury steak is what people are talking about all the time. Man, oh man. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so we were talking about you were using uh, a Strymon Iridium on your gigs, for the live stuff, and you were asking me what I recommend, what I thought. Yeah, I've been using it not not for rock shows, but for yeah, comedy shows, just for ease of uh, yeah, of uh, of you know, yeah, I've been using the Strymon Iridium, but. Even though I I think Strymon is awesome, uh, I feel like um, I feel like maybe there's a better maybe I'd try something else. Yeah. Or you know what I might be doing wrong What's that? is I just find like the the Strymon it just doesn't I don't know it doesn't take pedals that well. I have maybe tried I'm like that. hooking. What's that? I haven't tried the Iridium. It's cool, but I feel like it's not as cool as I want it to be. And everyone talks about this this model or that mo model. Or, um, so I'm yeah, I'm just curious. Well, I, I recommended the Friedman thing, which I want to check out. I've heard really good stuff that John Nathan Cordy does a nice video on that. And also, um, uh, we're talking about the Boss one, the new Boss. Seems yeah. Pretty good. Just, that, which is just the size of a, a pedal, right? Yeah. That's cool, so that's too. Cool. Pedal board friendly. Pedal board friendly, right? Yeah. I was talking about the fractal, but they're, which I love, but they're a thing. You know, I find they're, they're uh, first of all, they're not inexpensive, you know, and, no. and you say you want to use your pedals. So the fractal is kind of overkill with that because it's got all the stuff in it as well. Here's my dog. Yeah. I, I like, I mean, I, this is the thing, like, I like pedals because they're fun, and I also like when they have cool drawings and stuff on them. I'm just mm -hmm. a, I'm a sucker um, for that. So uh, if there's a cool drawing on a pedal, I'm probably going to buy it. Which I I appreciate about pedal cool pedals. Um, oh oh yeah, BB, you and Dave should look into quilter blocks. Oh, my friend Jordan Olds has one of those, and he loves it, but it's yeah, really big. Bob well, they have ones that are on a pedal board, like they're kind of small. There's there's a bunch of different size ones. Oh, maybe I should look into that. And it's also a power amp, too. Look at BB. Always with the answers. I'm going to check this out. I'm Tell Dave it. your next three gang, Dangerous Snakes Who <laughs> Hate, eat, eat Bullshit, or is it Hate? Right? It's Hate. Yeah, there's hate. a letter missing. Demand you're on the next cruise or there'll be troubles. That's Dave's. Uh, you can buy some of Dave's merchandise on his, his site with his shirts. Yep. Um, cool. Yeah, that's my street gang. It's a global street gang. Um, I got to get you jumped into the gang, Jeff. You do. I, I'll, yeah. I'll buy it. I'll, I'll, no, I'll no. I'll, I got you covered. All right, yeah, extra, extra. It, I'm really if tall. anyone if anyone gets a shirt or a patch, you're instantly the the leader of your local chapter wherever you live. And I'll be the people ask me what happens if there's more than one leader in any given town. And uh and I sort 
I settle the hierarchy uh, via passive aggressive text messages. <laughs> that would be like a knife fight where you tie the wrist together like in Star Trek. No, no, I just, I just sort of be like, um, okay, um, I guess we could talk about this now. I'm just in the ER, but no, this is important. <laughs> are you playing in New York soon? So I can come see you. When are you playing next? Oh, you're asking me. I'm asking uh, you. I am. What's today? I'm Sunday, March 17th. I'll be at City Winery with Wesley Stace in the Cavalcade oh, okay. of Stars for, for Wesley Stace's Cabinet of Wonders. All right. Well, there you yeah. go. Yeah, totes. Can you put me on the list? Okay. I can totally put you on the list. If you oh, want to was... come, there's there's no pressure to come, but you can totally come. Well, I love going to see comedy. I'm just being that guy. There's always like, hey, man, I'll come see you play. Can you put me on the list? <laughs> You're like, how do you think we make money? You're like, you know, <laughs> I always love. There's always those guys. Hey, man. Like, I remember when you got, I mean, that gig was I did in New York. At the bitter end was Robin Ford, and it got sold out. You know, people were like, hey, man, can you put me on the list? And you're like, you realize that we get the door, right? You know what I mean? Like all these people yeah. start coming out of the woodwork. You're like, you realize that that's how the band gets paid because they pay us. And the more people we bring in, uh, the more money the band makes, right? You know, it's, I always find it yeah. kind of fun. Like, I like, always think like, okay, I'll get you in. Can I borrow 15 bucks? Sure. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, that's awesome. It is a weird thing. Like I try... Uh, cause I hate it. So I'm in it one day when I walk away from show business, I'm going to mm -hmm. write a big list of annoying things that people do. And at the top of the list is texting to say, what time do you go on? <sighs> no. And then you go, show starts at eight. No. What time are you real? What time are you on? What time are you really on? And like, like they're like, I can't possibly be bothered to show up a minute beforehand, right? Um, and I have no access to the internet, so I have to ask you. I have like, <laughs> well, right, okay, I can understand. Like, okay, so if you go to a show that doors open at six, and then you don't go on till nine, but if you say I'm supposed to go on at nine, like you know, I'm it says nine. Yeah, you know, I, I can't control if it's nine thirty or ten, but I agree with you. That makes me crazy. I like I uh, on the Tenacious D tour. I would have people texting me twenty minutes before I was supposed to go on stage in front of ten thousand people. Hey, um, can you tell them to let me into VIP parking? More than one person. Wow, like texting like, hey. We're, we told them we're with the band. I'm like, well, you're not with the band. I just left your tickets. I didn't get you parking. I, we're done. I, I did more for you than I needed to. Yeah, people are funny but that way. People, or this is my other favorite one, is when people say like, hey, can you meet for dinner? I want to say this on behalf of every performer doing any performance of any kind. No, we can't meet you for dinner right before the show at the restaurant well just come on by can you come by buy for a drink then mm -hmm. the, the restaurant's only two two miles from the venue can you come have a drink right before your show and then that's the same person that will invariably text and be like dude i'm so sorry dinner ran long we missed the show oh my god now i'm just I don't know. or but hey don't... can you get backstage i would love to meet blah 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 and you're like no yeah i'll come out and disappoint you you won't be backstage you'll just be right. in the lobby um like the kind of gigs that i do there's some sort of exciting backstage and everybody comes out front anyway it's just a funny thing yeah it's I'm not doing um stadium and, and if you've been backstage at stadium gigs, backstage can often be just this other side room that they just put you in, you know? Yeah. Cinder block room. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, what's another one? It's endless. Oh, yeah. It drives me crazy. 
when people are like, are you, or, or are you free after the gig? That gear and guitars and like what? I can't just leave the stuff. That one's always another one. Oh, just bring, just bring an amp and two guitars and another thing and your pedal board too. Um, what's the, the other one? Then there's the people that text you with constant updates of when they're going to get there. <laughs> when you're not asked them for any of it, they're like, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm coming. I'm just like, I'm in a, I'm in a cab. Sorry. I'm not there yet. I'm like, Oh, I, I didn't notice. <laughs> and <you're, laughs> I sound like a real perfect. bastard. No, no. It's just, it's, it's clueless. Like what's going on before your head. In a gig, in your head before a gig, ten thousand people is not is like you know, um, it. Do you, you know what? Like you, they have no idea. Like that, you're just thinking, what do I got to do to not screw this up? You mentally, the mental state. I mean, you know, real talk. You were like, that takes a lot of concentration. You got to be in the right mood. You got, and the last thing you want to think about is your friend in the parking lot not being able to get parking. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's crazy. Here we go. Um, yeah. Uh, this is Jason Lock. I've already irritated John Hodgman by standing behind him uh, during Scrabble saying XXXX7. Those letters suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go. I love John Hodgman. I, I love too. Jonathan Colton too. I'm really just sad not to be there. Not to do well. Um, now that you've played to 10,000 people, do you have a sub for the gigs where there's less than 10,000 people? Is asking Angus. I consider it. I consider it. But no, I'm, I go, I'm still, you know, man of the people. Mm -hmm. um, the fortunate thing is I'm not that popular. So when I do my own gigs, there aren't 10,000 people. <laughs> no, mine either. But I have to say, that's really... But it's more fun when there's 10,000 people, I think. Um, I've done, I don't, I don't I've actually played to 10, played about eight, yeah, on festivals in Europe. And that is a whole different experience. But I got to say, eight, eight's okay. Eight's okay. It's okay. It's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little exciting. I do like small gigs too, a lot for the kind of music I play too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, playing instrumental, nerdy guitar music to 10,000 people isn't you know what i mean like it's a different sort of experience yeah i yeah. prefer your gigs man i, I prefer playing to <laughs> 10 12 people come to my gigs no yeah but it it is a different experience i'm, I'm sure comedy it's got to be pretty especially your kind of comedy which i think is high energy and you're playing off of people i think any comedian is but to me i could see how that might be a small group of people would, would be harder, much harder. I think it just My depends opinion. like on the vibe, you know, small yeah. group can be great. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, the, where, where my career's at, they tend to be small groups. Yeah. But loyal groups. Yes. Yeah, small rabbit, rabbit, rabbit fans. <laughs> All right, man. I, I think I got to go walk dogs. Yeah, me They're too. Starting to hear them. But, um, Thanks so much for coming on. I had fun talking to you. As yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, wait, we didn't talk about Uli Roth. Hold on. Uli Roth. The question of the day. There was an Uli Roth-based question? Well, I'm going to... Hold on. Where did my questions go? I got a few questions. Where did everything go? I'm so, such a, I'm so ashamed of myself. Okay. I'm not a great interviewer. Okay. Yes, you are. Um, what is the greatest soul of all time, and why do you think it sails a Sharon? This is the question. <laughs> um, what is the greatest metal soul of all time, and why do you think it sails a Sharon? Uh, the, well, the, I think that's the correct answer. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know. it is amazing. It's like it. it it's in just. Uh, He's such a great, it's just an insane song. And to be like, just be like, okay, the beginning of the song, I'm just going to rip the completely insane the solo, the greatest solo of all time as mm -hmm. the intro to the song. 
And then yeah. then we'll let Klaus Minus sing a little bit, and then that'll be the song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's done. Yeah, it's good. It's um, the only song I can think of that starts with an insane solo, and then there's not another solo, I don't think. I I think so. Um, But it's great. It's completely shredding while also being insanely melodic and, like, soulful and... uh it's just amazing right it's one of my favorite probably my yes all right it is my favorite one right now oh yeah jason lachlan he's doing the, the humble brag not so humble i've done sixty thousand people with jim brew at rockin fest and that was nuts yeah but with jim brewer come on i mean no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <sighs> um, i've done vakin uh not to brag but and it is amazing but oh. I did not play first. I was in a tent at Vakken. I didn't do okay. like the main stage. But I will say Vakken is maybe the funnest thing on earth. It seems that way. I know Angus like, has done it. Yeah. I had which band did he play with? I think it was the TSO, the Trans Siberian Orchestra. With TO, yeah. Um yeah, Vakken is like I was there for four days. And it was the best run thing I've ever witnessed of like just anything like a hospital, German. whatever. German. It's complete. Yeah. Yeah. Not like you would think there's like a hundred thousand people there. You would think someone would like some sweaty guy would rub up on you. Tra th there was no trash anywhere. Nothing. I there was like nothing. I was not irritated for one second at Vakken. Any That's American awesome. festival, there's no way I would go to any American festival with mm. that many people because Americans no. are the worst. And but I've gotten invites to like, oh, you want to go to uh, you know Burning Man? Or I'm like, what are you out of your fucking mind? No way! Oh like, yeah, horrible. Or even any of uh, one of my friends puts on stuff at at Mandel's Island, and she's like, uh, hey, we can get you tickets. You know, Rage Against the Machine is playing. Whatever it was, I think it was them. And I'm like, no. How many people are going to be there? Like, it's a whole day. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do the it. The only way I would attend an American festival of that size is if you were to just, like, helicopter, helicopter mm -hmm. dropping me off on the side of the stage, and then someone carries me and sits me down, picks me up, mm -hmm. helicopters me away. Then yeah. I would do it. I would. I'm kind of the same on that. Yeah. All right. On that note, man, thanks so much for hanging. Once again, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm just a diva, I guess. But yeah, thank All you right. for having me. Hold on. Here's the Angus time. In it. Okay. I did walk in with TSO and Sabotage both at the same time for 85,000. That's amazing. I don't it know. It's not, it's not a competition, Jason, but Angus won. Yes. <laughs> um, I played with Public Enemy Nice T. How's that? That's amazing. At where? In Germany, on stage with them. Like, That's amazing. Like an hour. <laughs> yeah, well, like, That's incredible. Well, they out. So there's my cred on that. I just That's, happen to go. I to... mean, that's pretty. That I mean, I know I gave the award to Angus, but I'm taking it back and I'm giving it go. to you, Thank Jeff. You. In your face, Angus. I chose yeah. the uh, I chose the music as as one of that old jazz thing, like. Well, you know, the question is kind of music. How many people you want to play to? Five, fifty thousand, five thousand, five hundred, or fifty? <laughs> Depends on what kind of music. I seem to have chosen the music that's fifty people. You know. Yeah, but it's not. It's, right. it's just you know sometimes you gotta, just as long as you're touching hearts. It's true. It's, it's all that know. matters. I'm reaching people here. That's online. exactly right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This um, this is uh, Jason Carter. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Name drop stream of the year. We did some get some good name drops on this one. We did. I mean, there were a lot of strong name dropping, but I'm a huge fan of name dropping. It. I think it's fun. And uh, yeah, every point in time we can. Yeah, sure. I I think it's good as long as you can back it up with a, you know, like if I just would have said my close personal friend Ronnie James Dio and then didn't tell you that he wanted to get Indian food. Right. Then it wouldn't be a good story. But then I say, 
and he asked me to get Indian food. Then yeah. we have a good story. <laughs> it it will always be this. It shall always be, always was, and shall always be my friend Angus. <laughs> yes, Jeff winced. <laughs> we have to Tomorrow. have the the uh me, you, Angus, and Jason summit. Yeah, Indian food. Yeah, we can get Indian food. This is East perfect. Sixth, over at Sixth Street or in, something like that. In honor of Dio. Sounds I'm good gonna to me. Be, I'll be the, I'm the, you guys all beat the shit out of me on guitar. It's going to be intimidating. But it's we want cool. no guitars at dinner. I was going to say, we won't do that at dinner. It's okay. But yeah, we yeah, can go so to watch feel... our guitars. I can pick you up on the way if you want to do You that. know, what? Every whenever I'm in Morristown, New Jersey, I always like to swing by Watchtower Guitars. And see your friend you John Skirk. Yeah, John from Afghan Wigs. They have Gibson, Fender, PRS, LSL, Bad Cat Amps, Milkman. I'm basically doing my own. This is how I know you're like, what is he, Rain Man? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks so much. Thank I'll you. See. You can stay on. I'll get a say bye to it. Thanks so much. Hey, BB, thanks so much. And don't forget, guys, I have my live master class. Coming up this weekend, you can get half off. Use the link in the, the on the side there in the chatter down below. It's the blues moves, the blues rhythm guitar moves. Um, it's a live masterclass showing you things that you can use in pretty much any blues situation to get your rhythm guitar playing to the next level, to use all those cliches. And thanks, everyone. I will see you next week. Uh, back to talking about nerdy stuff. I can maybe talk about how people get so incensed when I did a video on vintage guitars versus relics and how I'm a total poser for playing a relic guitar at times. Someone called you a poser? Oh, yeah. The, the chats are the best. Yeah, the, people say that. Just the... Yeah, I mean, investment bankers and the, and the Internet's ruined everything, but it's hard to play vintage guitars now because investment bankers ruined it. Right, and also I'm like, well, if I own a vintage guitar or two, which I do, and I like a relic because they feel most like the vintage guitar, but I don't have to worry about them, mm -hmm. uh, does, what does that mean? I, I could do both, so is if I have a... <laughs> it's just crazy. It's funny stuff, man. You got to use... Anyway. I'm, uh, the Dave Hill method is to buy an unreliced brand new guitar mm -hmm. and then to walk around and just bang into stuff with it. I like that what I I do. I don't do it on purpose. It just happens. <laughs> Spoke to Lyle earlier from Sonic Audio. Um, awesome. Thanks, man. That's why I'm not a poser. I'm not a poser. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, Dave. Hang on. I'll be with you, Dave. And thanks, everyone. I will see you next week, okay. and I'll see you got a video on Saturday morning about something I do.